Good morning, everybody. Is it warm or cold today? Anyway, uh, I am Vilas Sridhar Taude. Sridhar is my father's name. We searched uh, where Taude came from, so we saw that Taude was 21 generations. We had a name of Taude before that, we had a name. So I inherited Taude from my ancestor. I inherited some part of the property from my father, forefathers. But we do not inherit the earth from our ancestor. We borrow it from our children. That's why my tagline is, go green, there is no planet B. If anybody knows, please let me know. So I'm going to speak on holistic approach towards global warming. This is the slide I present in most of my climate change or uh, global warming. Is it a threat? How many of us agree that there is a threat of climate change? Put your hands up. Okay, good. So we are, are we on the verge of six exti mass extinction? And could it be worse? I understand ISAR has kept mathematics mandatory for uh, their uh, research. So we, anybody understand law of average? 69 years was extinction, 124, 51, 134. And now we have completed 66 million years. By law of average, we are on the verge of sixth extinction. In the first decade, Newton predicted the year, end of the world. Does anybody know it? 2060. In the first decade of 18th century, he has predicted 2060. You can Google it. I think somebody must be already started Googling it. I believe in Hindu mythology. 12 hours of the day of Brahma is a day where Srishti will be there on the earth. 12 hours of the day of Brahma is a night where there will be no Srishti on the earth. And these 12 hours are 4.5 billion years. Planet Earth has completed that. I'm not scaring you, but I'm putting the facts. So, Somebody may ask, we have survived five extinction. We will survive the sixth. Yes, planet can survive. Whether the mankind will exist after that? Examine a universe without a human being. Dinosaur did not survive the fifth, uh, extinction, fifth extinction. They lived for 120 million years. So, climate change or global warming is the critical in terms of energy, we are transitioned from C to H. C is a slight of H where fuel wood starts. Slowly, we came to coal where hydrocarbon started increasing. Then came the fossil fuel like oil, etc., where, hydro, uh, where hydrogen increased. And we are moving towards a sustainable energy, which is the hydrogen, where uh, uh, the bridge has to be made by a gas which, in which field I work for the last 10 years, specifically on unconventional gas. This is enabler to the COP21 commitment. We just concluded COP27. Many things have progressed. There are one or two aspects which uh, need to be addressed, which will be addressed in next. So this is how the carbon footprint is there uh, fuel-wise. Starting from wood, 0.38, the least is 0.19, which is natural gas. And coal bed methane is the methane extracted from the coal is the cleanest fossil fuel on the planet. It comes around 0.183 or something per kg CO2 per unit. Now people think switching to electric car is going to reduce pollution. I see a smokes. Uh, that's directly I'm seeing a smoke coming from the factory or maybe from the power plant. If you imagine the grid power by which we are charging is emitting 0.79 kg CO2 per unit. So electric vehicles are environmentally more polluting if you are not charging with the renewable power or you are just shifting the pollution from Pune city 
to Chandrapur where the power plants are there or down where the power plants are there and we are increasing it. So government should make a mandate, those who have electric vehicle, there is an option of choosing renewable power, they should charge by renewable power. And the better option is, of course, the biogas, which is in fact a carbon negative. We have two electrical charging installed, one in Nigatpuri and one in Mumbai, which are electrically or carbon negative charging stations. That should be promoted. What is targeted in the country? Hydrogen production cost a dollar per kg in one decade. This is the statement of the largest business empire in India, Mukesh Ambani statement. Very good. If it happens, it will be a game changer. Right now the production cost is four to six. But will the ecosystem be developed to absorb this hydrogen? Let's see how fast we go for that. So renewables as expected uh, uh, by the BP Energy outlook will come to 20% if we go to net zero by 2050. 80% uh, will go to 60%, uh, 20 will be for hydrocarbons, rest will be the other. So hope for the best. India so decided to move towards gas economy we are presently 6%, targeting 15%. World average is 24%. Gujarat state is 27%. I reviewed, uh, I was involved in uh, all the CGD network. 90% of the area is covered with the gas uh, allocation. Now the grids and uh, pipelines have to be developed. And there is a synergy has to be with biofuel, with fossil fuel is explored. So energy transition is going to happen and we have to allow that flow to transit. That's the uh, second potential, CBM potential in India. This is only a part of it. Even if you tap 20%, 20% uh, uh, of total gas requirement can be met by biogas. Otherwise, this is converting into methane, the topic which I am going to touch. And we have a national policies on biofuels. Uh, these are all transition things where uh, biotechnologies, engineers, and all other engineer, uh, technologists have to come and help in transition. In one, in one go, we can't switch off directly from fossil to hydrogen. So there are transition, blending of ethanol, 20% blending is allowed now. It's a reduction in carbon emission. Uh, we have already achieved 10% uh, target of the government. So there are futurist target, and there are many algae-based third-generation biofuels uh, will play a critical role. And then there is a road map. We are achieving more on the uh, solar purpose, be, being a tropical country. But rest uh, we need to achieve. Planet's target is 2050. We are lagging 20 years behind. But we support. Probably it is achievable. The worst part of the climate change is the countries which are emitting less per capita are less vulnerable. Uh, uh, more per capita CO2 are less vulnerable and those countries which, which are emitting less, less per capita like India and Africa, Bangladesh is the worst affected, are the most vulnerable to the climate change. Why so? That's here. So which is uh, the gas causing global warming? Anybody? Which gas is prominently carbon dioxide? Exactly. But if you see CO2 in terms of metric tons, if you see power sector consumes a lot, then comes industry, then comes transport, buildings, and energy sector and agriculture. But if you see a global greenhouse gas energy basket, 14% comes from agriculture. Why so? The reason is not CO2. These are the methane emission uh, industry. Out of the 100%, 30% uh, is the natural methane. Out of the 70%, which is uh, atropogenic methane, 60, around 60% comes from agriculture. And from where it comes, 54% com percent comes from cattle remuneration. The burping of cattle. 17% comes from rice cultivation, 15% comes from uh, N2O emissions, and this is the area of focus. Uh, 
if you consider methane, methane is not only uh, harmful uh, over the next 20 years time, but also it uh, creates toxic chemicals. If you see, uh, methane is 28 times more hazardous than CO2 over a 100 year period. But why it is more? Next 20 years are very important. In next 20 years, methane is 84 times more potent than carbon dioxide in terms of global warming potential and in terms of global thermal potential, it is almost three to four times more. This is the aspect which I want to emphasize. So energy uh, carbon trading market, we are going to go, get to see a very good trend, a very good market will be coming. So what are the initiatives towards sustainability in agriculture? Sufalam, rice farming, we can increase the yield, I will go in detail. Uh, project Kamdeno, other ones, and then Neel Shika. Unfortunately, India had a white revolution, we got milk, India had a green revolution, we have food security. India didn't go for blue flame revolution. And that's what we are focusing on. Agriculture initiatives, SRI technique, increase the yield, cash crop, support system, etc. Then animal husbandry, so along with cow, cattle farming, etc. How to increase the yield. Third is uh, blue flame revolution. In 80s, I come from a very small village of uh, Konkan. My mama was having a biogas plant, but now we have to strive to act uh, towards the villagers to start the biogas plant. That blue flame revolution which was started in 80 did not continue. So what is the impact? Along with uh, one of the uh, Bhagirath Gram Vikas, we installed, this is last year's figure, 8033 biogas plant. One tree captures only 30 grams of CO2. So, if you see, one biogas saves around 6.5 tons of carbon uh, CO2 equivalent, which is equivalent to 253 years. And if you convert that, Bhagirath Gramikas with 8033 have planted 17,40,000 virtual trees in the district. So, they have also started implementing SRI and animal husbandry. This project we are evaluating, methane reduction. A balanced diet, National Dairy Development Program supports, which reduces methane by 20%, increase in yield, milk yield by 50 to 750 milliliters. SRI paddy cultivation, systematic rice intermediate application, uh, the it is done intermittent irrigation and alternate wetting drying is done, 25 reduction in methane emission and yield to 40 to 60%. Saguna uh, farm techniques, they, come, uh, they, they, they say that they can even increase the yield by 80 percent. It's near Karjan. So what's the total CO2 potential? If you come, compare, only take a realistic. Uh, government target is one crore household biogas plant should be there. Only 10 percent of the paddy field we convert to uh, SRI. And only 10 percent of the cow population if we convert. That's a very small target. What we are going to achieve? 6.5 tons of carbon traded from biogas, 0.7 crores ton of carbon traded from sofalam, and 1.1 of carbon traded from Kamdenu. Total 8.2 crores. This means virtually you are going to plant 250 million trees in the country. See, it's a grown up tree. When you plant a tree, it takes 5 to 6 years to grow up, then it starts capturing 30 grams. Investment is there, ESG audit has been mandatory, sustainable development goals are there. So funding will come, funding has already started to come. We as Bhagirath got funding from MNGL for 500 biogas plant. Now there comes what is the projected monetary gain for the above initiatives. In December, the parliament has passed the law for carbon trading in India, will kick off in September, and millions of small old farmers could, uh, farmers could build benefit. Only on the real estate statement, this, these credits are uh, because uh, social initiatives, they get a gold standard, but I'm not considering gold standard. There are five times what the normal standards are. There is a 25,000 crores can come from Neil Jodh, 1,000 crores revenue can come from uh, SRI, 4,000 crores from Kamdenu, and this can be shared with the farmers. Farmers 
our farming is the most impacted industry in the global warming and the last i always say the greatest threat to the power to our climate is the belief that someone else will save it not someone else we don't require eco friendly people we now require eco warriors i have done some initiatives i converted my domestic power to renewable power i get a satisfaction of planting 160 trees i funded biogas plant i get a satisfaction of 1296 tree years i changed i did audit change uh, my uh, all the electricity uh, gadgets to the environment friendly 20% power saving 400 so as of uh, this i did in last 2 to 3 years i am proudly saying i have planted 1500 trees you can do that i give eco friendly samais or uh, doing the house warming in fact today we are going for that function and last uh, is 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 not today's topic rain water harvesting the most potent and uh, not potent 55 to 60% of the global warming is done by water vapor but it is not counted because it is not on the 100 years time scale it lasts for very short so whatever every drop which falls on the land has to be harvested or storm water to the ocean where the evaporation will take place and the ecological cycle is mentioned but that's not the topic for today water is a separate topic for fossil fuel for natural gas try to move from c to h wherever possible uh, uh we have a carbon emission apps are available just uh, you can uh, try from here going to university if i go by auto what will be the carbon emission then try bicycle there are alternate ways so everyone has to take care how to be a eco warrior to save our planet the most important thing these are all predictions but human brain is very very strong there are workings going on on uh, microbes which may eat carbon dioxide we already established microbes which are eating uh, uh, heavy oil and uh, disintegrating if that happens probably we can save the planet at least save some part of the human uh, some maybe 15 20 30% of the human kind so that the life continues thank you very much